So now that we can actually do everything we need to do a linear programming problem, that's um, define our variables, create our constraints, and create our objective function. Now we're able to actually put it all together and actually answer what a linear programming problem is. So let's go ahead and do this one graphically. And it says a snack bar cooks and sells hamburgers and hot dogs during football games. To stay in business, it must sell at least 10 hamburgers but cannot cook more than 20. It must also sell at least 20 hot dogs but cannot cook more than 35. The snack bar cannot cook more than 38 items total. The profit on the hamburger is 33 cents and the profit on the hot dog is 21 cents. How many of each item should it sell to make the maximum profit? So again, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually create the, decide what our variables are. So our first variable looks like we have hamburgers, which we'll call X. And we have hot dogs, which we'll call Y. All right. And we know it says they must sell at least 10 hamburgers, but cannot cook more than 20. So it looks like to create that constraint, that constraint looks like that X has to be in between. At least 10 means it's greater than 10, but no more than 20, less than or equal to 20. And then it says that it must also sell at least 20 hot dogs, but cannot cook more than 35. So it looks like Y has to be in between 20 and 35. They can't cook more than 38 items though. So because they can't cook more than 38, we know that the items they're cooking are hot dogs and hamburgers. So because they can't cook more than 38 items, we know that the hot hamburgers plus the hot dogs has to be less than or equal to 38. So there are your constraints for this problem. And then the last part is what is the objective function, Z? So we want to maximize the profit and to get profit here z is equal to well it's 33 cents for a hamburger plus 21 cents for a hot dog so it's going to maximize our profit so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come here on our graph right and we're going to label what the axis is with our variable so we know that the x-axis is the hamburger axis and we know that the y-axis is the hot dog axis. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna graph the actual constraints that were given to us. So the first one says that X is in between 10 and 20. Well, X is in between, uh, the line X, when they say something like that, oh, we need the other, the other constraints we need are, don't forget, we also need our non-negative constraints, which say that X greater than or equal to zero, you have to make hot dog, you have to make hamburgers, Y greater than or equal to zero, you have to make hot dogs as well. So we're in the first quadrant. And so x greater than or equal to 10, which is what this is saying right here. You read it, read the variable first. It's x greater than or equal to 10. Is a vertical line at 10, like this. So we're gonna draw a vertical line here. This is the line x. That's the line x equals 10. So greater than or equal to 10 would be to the right of that line. So your shade takes place like this to the right of that line. But it's in between 20, but it's less than or equal to 20. So that's going to look like this. And again, your shade is going to take to the left of that line. So your shading, your overlap takes place inside of this. So I'll get rid of all of this out here. All right. So this is basically where the hamburgers have to be made from. And then the other one says that Y is in between 20 and 35. So in between 20, and that's a horizontal line. So here and here. And we're in between there, so we're shading all of this inside of here. So this is defining our feasible region based on those. And then the last one, we need this equation, x plus y is less than or equal to 38. We need to make that into a line that we can graph. Remember the graph lines, we need to turn this into slope-intercept form. So to turn this into slope-intercept, the variable x, x plus y less than or equal to 38, 
we move the x over. And remember, I move that x over, it becomes a negative, so I get y less than or equal to negative x plus 38. Where the y-intercept is 38, and then the slope is negative 1, so that means down 1 over 1. So it looks like this. We'll plot this line all the way through. So you can see the intersections occurring now. And we're going to be less than that. So we're taking our shading in between there like this. This is the shaded part, the shaded region. So we see that we have corner points defined right here at 10, 20. We have a corner point defined right here at 10, 28. We have a, another corner point defined right here at looks like 18 20 so that is going to define our shaded region or our feasible region here this part is our feasible region right here and now that we have the feasible region defined the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take those corner points and we're going to remember we want to find maximum profit we want to find maximum profit so we want to maximize z equal to 0.33x plus 0.21y. And so we'll take our corner point. The first corner point is 1020. So we'll take this corner point, 1020, and we'll plug it in. Right? And so when we plug that in, we get a z value. Z is equal to 0 0.33 times 10 plus 0.21 times 20. When I do that math, I get this equal to $7.50. But I take the next point, 1028, and do that math again. So here, Z is equal to 0.33 times 10 plus 0.21 times 28. When I do this math, I get $9.18. And then this last point, 18.20, that'll be 0 0.33 times 18 plus 0 0.21 times 20. When I do that, I get a value of $10.14. So based on the region that is defined, the optimal solution that maximizes profit is going to be this one right here, $10.14. So that means we need to sell 18 hamburgers and 20 hot dogs to maximize profit. And it maximizes it with $10.14.